The Premier League is now over, and after this season, there's a new problem that is absolutely destroying the credibility of the branding of the league. The Premier League is silently turning into a farmer's league, and there's countless evidence to prove that. What does that even mean, you might ask? A farmer's league is a term used to describe a league where one or two teams dominate year after year, leaving little competition and excitement for the rest of the teams. Fans of the Premier League have always laughed at other leagues for having one dominant champion, like PSG in France, or Bayern Munich in Germany. But now it's time to look in the present and ask if the Premier League is becoming what they mocked. And as much as what we just said might sound controversial, we believe there's three main factors that led the Premier League to this massive downgrade. Let's start with some history. Premier League fans have always prided themselves on the league's competition. They've laughed at other leagues where the title race is over before it begins. Even La Liga, with its Real Madrid and Barcelona duo, has been included in the Premier League fans' jokes. They claim that these leagues were boring, predictable, and lacking the competition that makes football exciting. But is the Premier League any different now? From 2013 to 2017, the Premier League presented four different winners. Manchester United, Manchester City, Chelsea, and Leicester City. This period was a golden era for the league's marketing system, showing its unpredictability and the high level of competition. The marketing was brilliant, selling the Premier League as the most exciting league in the world, where anyone could beat anyone, and the title race was always thrilling. This was a key point that set the Premier League apart from the other top European leagues, allowing the English teams to get richer and richer with time passing. And all of this led to the Premier League being considered as the NBA, the UFC, the NFL of football, the best league in the world with the most quality and the most money. The Premier League's branding has always been on top, it's been marketed as the best, the most competitive, and the most exciting league in the world. The presentation is sick, and the matches are broadcasted everywhere in the world, reaching millions of fans. The style of play is fast and dominant, competitive, making every game feel like an event. Even when it hasn't always boasted the best players, the Premier League has managed to draw the biggest TV audiences. The domestic rights deal for 2025-2026 to 2029-2030 is worth $6.7 billion, and the last rights sale generated $5.05 billion, a figure expected to rise after renewal. However, in recent years, one team has overshadowed this competition, creating one main issue, which is the first factor of the three main issues listed we mentioned at the very start of this video, and that is the dominance of Manchester City. They've become so dominant that the league's competitive balance is in question. City has won the Premier League six times in the past seven years, including four titles in a row, a series that's never been done before, not even before the Premier League was actually invented in 1992. Their dominance is such that it's fair to ask if the Premier League is still the competitive league it once was. And then there's the City Football Group, the owners of Manchester City, who also own several other teams around the world, like Girona and Besiktas. They are actually working in the shadows and contributing to the city's monumental and unstoppable growth. We made a video on them, explaining their situation in detail. City are backed by wealth from Arab owners who have spent a lot of money on transfers, creating a super team that few can compete with. This complex of money has undoubtedly helped City dominate domestically, but it raises questions about how fair the competition really is. But even though this huge network of money seems to be working perfectly for Manchester City, their financial situation actually raises a ton of questions. They're currently facing 115 charges related to alleged breaches of financial regulations, yet they continue to dominate. Pep Guardiola may have claimed that his squad was in big trouble, but they still managed to win another title. Meanwhile, teams like Everton get punished quickly for financial fair play violations. So the question that rises from all of this is the following. Why are we still waiting for City to face any real consequences? This is damaging the league's credibility. The Premier League can't be seen as fair and competitive if one team operates under different rules than everyone else. Think about it. Not one European league has seen two sides suffer point deductions this season while the champions await the outcome of a court case for years. For the sixth time in seven seasons, the English title has been won by a club facing 115 charges related to alleged breaches of financial rules. This isn't just a coincidence, it's a pattern that calls into question the entire structure and fairness of the league. Adding to the league's troubles, this season saw all three newly promoted teams get relegated again. And this brings us to the second factor, the huge gap between Championship and Premier League. 
This doesn't exactly mean competitiveness. It suggests a growing gap between the big Premier League clubs and those trying to break into the top tier. That happens for many reasons. First, the competition is very tough. The Premier League has some of the best teams and players in the world. These top teams have a lot more money, better players, and more experience. When a new team comes up from the lower league, called the Championship, they often don't have the same quality or depth in their squad. Secondly, the pressure is huge. Every game is important, and even a few losses can put a team in a difficult position. Promoted teams also struggle with injuries, as they might not have enough strong backup players to replace the injured ones. Additionally, adding to the faster pace and higher level of the Premier League takes time, and some of these teams don't have enough time to adapt before they start losing points. Finally, these teams might also lack the financial resources to buy new, better players to compete at this higher level. All these factors combined make it really hard for newly promoted clubs to stay in the Premier League, leading many of them to get demoted back to the Championship quickly. And then there's another factor, the European failures on English clubs. European failures have also highlighted the Premier League's issues this season. Liverpool, a team that was once competing for the Champions League, suffered a humiliating 3-0 defeat by Atalanta in the European League. This was a stark reminder that the Premier League teams are not as dominant on the European stage as the league's marketing would have you believe. With all the money invested in the marketing going around naming the Premier League as best league in the world, you would expect the English teams to dominate other teams. The Premier League is considered to be the NBA of football by English fans, but it's just not true. Other English teams like Arsenal and Manchester United also failed to impress in Europe, underlining the league's struggles. Let alone winning, not a single English club will be playing a European final this year. The popularity of the Premier League is a masterclass in marketing. It is a perfectly packaged product that has been successfully sold to the entire world. The Premier League's PR department now has a problem though, the obvious difference between perception and performance. The high ranks of the Premier League obviously can't publicly admit it, but City winning the title once again is a disaster for brand and is the cherry on top of the two other issues we mentioned. Only Liverpool have managed to finish ahead of City, and it took a record-breaking start to the season to do so. City have raised the bar so high that not even 97 points guarantees the top spot. In fact, in the 2018-2019 season, Liverpool managed to reach the 97 points mark, but were still defeated by the citizens in the title run. One can obviously point to the fact that certain title races, like the seasons, have, on paper at least, been close. That they've gone to the final day. But what does it matter if the same team always finishes first? Or if it's obvious who will be crowned champions before the season even begins? Even when there are three teams in the title race, Liverpool, City, and Arsenal, Nobody had any doubt over who would win the league. Liverpool should have beaten City at Anfield, while Arsenal claimed a deserved and disciplined draw at the Etihad, but neither pretender managed to take the win. Jurgen Klopp's Reds almost inevitably ran out of this, with many injuries eventually. Arsenal, meanwhile, were essentially punished for losing a home game to an excellent Aston Villa side in April. It was their only league defeat in 2024, and they only dropped two other points, at City, and yet still finished second. And what makes it even worse is the fact City weren't even at their brilliant best this season. Kevin De Bruyne was sidelined for half of the campaign, and Erling Haaland only scored 27 league goals as a result. Which isn't a small amount, but compared to Haaland's usual numbers, it might as well be. Then, the fact that they won the league anyway, after going unbeaten since December, does not reflect well in the supposed competition. Nor does the quite frankly embarrassing performance of English sides in Europe this season. City obviously could, and should, have beaten Real Madrid in the quarterfinals of the Champions League, but it didn't happen. In conclusion, the Premier League is facing serious problems. Manchester City keeps winning, making it less exciting for fans. The league's great marketing can't hide the fact that one team is dominating, which isn't fair or fun. Financial issues, like City's 115 charges, show double standards compared to teams like Everton. Newly promoted teams struggle to stay up, and English clubs are failing in Europe. The City Football Group's vast spending power raises more fairness questions. The Premier League, once proud of its competitiveness, is now looking a lot like leagues it used to mock. If things don't change, fans might lose interest, and the league's reputation could keep falling. The Premier League must find a way to bring back the excitement and fairness that made it the best in the world. And also, if you want to know more on how City got to this level of domination, you better watch the video on the City Football Group that we made.